Hello and welcome to JP Farm. JP Farm is located in uh, Gishagi. Gishagi is in Kikuyu. So Gisha, uh, JP Farm is an organic farm where, where they are planting spinach, onions, uh, macadamia. They have uh, the vertical garden, this structure. So today we are taking a, an adventure in the garden to just try and understand how they do it, how the structure is built how it's planted, how it's maintained until, until the time of harvesting. After harvesting, we check on how the rotation is done, how they manage the diseases here. And basically, you know, organic farming is a, is a kind of farming that is really gaining popularity in Kenya, being that uh, most of these conventional farming methods have a lot of chemicals being applied to the, pro uh, to the product. So when it comes to harvesting, we have products in the market that have chemical residues. But when it comes to organic farming, the product is actually clean. It does not have any kind of residues. And as we move on, you'll also realize that uh, it's very easy to, uh, to kind of make your own organic nutrients that you use for the farm so that uh, you ensure that what you have is uh, very clean and very good for the market. We would encourage you to visit JP Farm have some knowledge, have an adventure around, and maybe have a contract with them to help you build up a structure that will help you produce uh, vegetables very, very conveniently. And basically, organic farming and the structure have a lot of, of advantages. The first advantage, of course, we are in an urban area, like Nairobi. So you realize that you'll use very minimal space and then you have a lot of production that you can actually supply your own family and maybe supply your neighbor if you so wish. And again, the issue of water, you use very little amount of water. We don't really have that opportunity or that phase to waste. So join us in this journey as we take a walk through the JP farm in Gishagi. So the first step, you get the HDPE liner. You get the screws for closing the line after you cut it. And then you get your soil. And then you get soil and manure and a spade that you'll use to put the soil to the, uh, to the HDPE liner. So the first step, of course, you cut the liner uh, a diameter that is good with you. You choose the diameter based on the space that you have. And then you reduce the diameter as you move until you reach the top one, which is the smallest. So you cut the dividers at the, at the HDP liner and then you close using the screws tightly. After closing, you put it down on the ground and then you add soil. So as you add soil, you add with manure towards the end of the, or the farthest end of the liner so that the manure is only where you are going to plant. So you put the soil and then you kind of press it so that when you give water, it does not sink down and then your kitchen garden falls. So you put the soil and press it down, press it down and keep adding the soil until the lower layer is filled up. Once the lower layer is filled up, you use sticks, you put sticks across around the, around the, around the, the, the first structure, uh, the same size as the size of the next liner that you're going to put. And then you put the liner around it so that the sticks are supporting it so that it doesn't fall back or leave an even space around the, around your structure. So after you put the structure, you add soil again, you put manure towards the end so that it's only right at the space where you're going to plant. So you do this step until the whole thing is filled up 
and you have your farm you ensure you press the soil firmly so that it does not collapse when you finally decide to put water the structure so once the structure is up you get you water it and then you get your seedlings and then you can plant you can raise your seedlings from within your farm or you can decide to uh, outsource for the seedlings ready seedlings you make sure that the seedlings are brought uh, either very early in the morning or very late in the evening so that uh, you reduce the effect of transplant shock when you transplant them when you transplant in the morning it's good you give enough water it's good you transplant in the evening you give enough water it's also good but transplanting during the day could be dangerous because the transplant shock can be very very harsh for the plants Take note that this structure takes uh, about 10 wheelbarrows of soil and one wheelbarrow of uh, manure, organic manure. And you know this depends on the size of the structure that you're having. If you're having a smaller, si a smaller structure, it will obviously take a small amount of soil and a small amount of uh, 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 manure. And if you're using a bigger size, it will take a lot of soil and a lot of manure as well. But one thing to note is that the amount of manure that you use will depend on the type of crop that you want to plant and the size of your structure and your rate of application. You apply more, you use more. You apply less, you use less. But it's advisable that you apply just enough for the plant so that you don't waste. And after uh, one season is complete or when you notice that uh, after, after the first season, you can always rotate your plants so that you try to avoid or get rid of diseases and pest buildup. And again, once you notice that the production of this structure is going down, you can always decide to remove the whole structure, mix afresh, and then replant it again so that you replenish the, the, whole, the whole structure. Because when you break it down and try to dig the soil once more, you even improve the aeration of the soil. So it's really, really healthy for your plants. 